Okay. Um, uh, if um, if you have any questions, or maybe we can discuss about the installation, or maybe some of the participants can share about uh, their experience about the hydroponic installations in your places. Maybe we can have uh, learn. We can have another point of view about the installations, and we can uh, also learn each other about uh, what kind of type, and maybe we can uh, become an alternative that we can choose for the uh, hydroponic installations. Thank you, team lecturer, for an excellent presentation. We are now opening the discussion for participants and observers. The discussion remains open until 3 p.m. the time zone for Jakarta. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind you that if you have verbal questions or feedback or suggestions for team lecturer, hit the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen on your Zoom panel and I will invite you to speak. Do not forget to activate your microphone before speaking. You might also choose to deliver questions in the chat section and I will read your query loudly. Make sure the addressee is set to everyone so I can view your query. Honorable team lecturer, there is one question from Mr. Ganesh from Nepal. He is uh, he's asking question. Um, it seems more costly. Is it economically feasible? Please, um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, costly, yes. Uh, for some, for some uh, installations, yes, it is costly, especially for the NFT and aeroponics. But well, it depends on you. Um, you can always reduce your cost by um, with the various materials. For example, okay, um, let me share my screen first. And the aeroponics, because aeroponics is always considered as the most um, expensive, expensive, one of the most expensive installations. But as you can see here, this is an aeroponic design for the simple one. It's not very costly because we can use a bamboo and also the plastic and the containers also. Yeah, we, uh, but we also have to realize that, you know, there is a, an advantageous by choosing an expensive material also. Uh, using this material will not be long lasting materials and we have to change it regularly, especially uh, for these kinds of uh, installations. Uh, this is an installation for potatoes uh, seed. So uh, in our office, we produce the mini tuber of potato and we're using this aeroponic system. Well, of course, uh, because uh, we always have an alternative to have these uh, cheap materials, I think it's, it's, it's quite affordable actually. But yes, we have to change it regularly. Maybe about one or two years, we have to change it. It's not long lasting material. So it's also uh, for some things like, okay, this one is also one of the, Cheap, cheap example of aeroponics. We use a, a styrofoam, also the plastic. Yeah, so it really depends on you. I think um, hydroponic is very flexible in the installations. Then we can always um, make an alternative, which is affordable for all of us. So if you have uh, a lot of 
uh, money and you have uh, ready to be in a high investment in hydroponics that you can choose the best metro that you can have. But if you don't have it and you really want to try to make your own uh, installation, it will be okay. So this is a, one of the kind of type of aeroponics. You can, let's see the other one. Okay, this is a kind of drip irrigation. Then I think it is also affordable. Uh, we can we can use this in, in our home yard. So this is a very affordable. When I was in the college, um, we asked our students to we challenge them to make a kinds of hydroponic installations, the cheapest one that you can that you can uh, get. Some of them is making a drip irrigation using this. So this is always a, a lot of alternative for you, for especially for the installations. Because uh, in hydroponics, one of the most important things is the nutrients that we're going to discuss tomorrow and also how to planting and how to maintain the system. And for the installations, you can always choose um, be creative and always be flexible. And you can even do this in your in, in an apartment or maybe in the limited space using any materials that you can have in your own home, in your, your house. You can always choose that. So this is uh, also made from a mineral bottle also. So it's, it's, it's not always expensive. It also depends on you. So this is a various DFT also. So as you can see, there is a various design in every type of installations. So it's not always uh, expensive. Even this one, it's also use a mineral bottle. See, this one is a bottle. Yeah, it's, it's a bottle of mineral water. Then you can put a hole in that. And you can put a net pot like this. It's kind of all that one. Net pot. Yeah. This is also made from a, a, it's a glass for a, for a bubble or coffee. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we, can, we can use this also. And for the cheapest one, I think is uh, the wig system is one of the cheapest one. But it's really need. Uh, uh, we have to we have to check the nutrients regularly to make sure that the plants can grow well. Okay, so I think that's um, our opinions for your questions. Thank you very much, Mrs. Fia, for the answer for Mr. Ganesh. Do you have further response regarding the answer from Mrs. Fia before we moved on to the next question? Okay. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe we can move on to the next question from Cambodia. Uh, Mr. Sharon, Mr. Saron asked how much it costs for installation of each hydroponic system, maybe in US dollar? Uh, okay, it's a various uh, it's a various time and various price. Um, for one of the installation for NFT, I think it's Okay, let me check in here. Uh, this one. Okay, sorry. I have to share screen first. Okay. So this is for an example because once again, it depends on what type of the material that you want to use for your system. So the price will be um, variable. So 
There is uh, the cheap one and also the most expensive one. For this short, uh, for the short and after design, it may be cost about uh, less than two hundred dollars for the small one. But for the bigger one and using a, a good quality material for about 100 meters square, it might be cost about 4000 4, to $5,000. Yeah, so, so it really depends on what kind of the material that you want to use. Because we can always have the cheap one and the expensive one. And also for the construction. So how big you want, how big you needed the installations, or what kind of the type of uh, structure that you want to apply to your system, it will be counting in, into the cost. So yeah, it's very it's variable. Thank you very much, Mrs. Via, for the answer. Uh, for Mr. Saron, do you have a further response? Regarding the uh, answer from Mrs. Via, okay, maybe we can move on to the next question. Another question from Nepal. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question from Nepal from Mr. Gansham. He is asking: Is this weak system can sustain the large plants like cucurbits, beans, etc? It is only for small plants like spinach, leeches, it is it. Okay, thank you, it's a very good question. So um, it depends on you. Actually, for this weak system, I think it's more suitable for the leafy vegetables. If you need to grow a large plant, such as percobit or bean or even melons or tomatoes, you can have another system. Um, they, use the yes, you can use a drip irrigation for that. This was one, one kind of the hydroponic installation as well. Okay, let me show you another one. Okay, it's a, it's a good question. Before you choose the installation, mm -hmm. you need to decide what kind of plants that you want to plant. Okay, so this is one of the examples. Yeah, this is a tomato. Tomatoes. And we use a drip irrigation on that. Using a substrate, of course, uh, the media inside the pots. Um, sometimes we use a harsh charcoal. It's, uh, it's not a soil. And we provide the nutrient solutions using this drip irrigation design. So we also do this in our office for a big plant such as a melon or a pepper bell and also a bean and anything. But uh, yes, because uh, is this kind of plant needs a kind of substrate to support their their plant, uh, their, their body because it, the habitat is really high and they need uh, a media to support their root. And it won't be possible if we use the weak system. Yeah, because uh, weak system is usually for uh, small plants like lettuce, pineage, leafy vegetable. leafy vegetable will be suitable for this. But for the big one, we suggest you to apply another installation. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Fia and Mrs. Sunny, for their answer. Uh, there is a follow-up question from Nepal. Um, Mr. Ganesh said, so for these systems, we need regular supply of sufficient amount of quality water. What about with the areas with water shortages? Therefore, is it possible in this condition? Okay, thank you. Uh, I think uh, what you mean is for the mix system or, or all the hydroponic system. I think um, if uh, for all, all of it, okay. Yes, actually, uh, hydroponic, in hydroponic, we use 
less water than when we plant, uh, for example, vegetables or other plant in the soil base. Actually, it's more efficient. So yes, for a place that have a water shortage, um, actually we we suggest we suggest to use a hydroponic system because um, if, for example, for for one system we need about five hundred liters of uh, nutrient solutions for the whole cycle, for example. But if you plant this plant in the soil you're going to need more than that. So one of the advantages using a hydroponic system is less water, actually. Less water yeah. and less nutrients. Less water and less nutrients. So the water will become more, um, you can use more effectively if you choose this kind of, um, this kind of system using a hydroponics. So uh, in the water shortage, uh, we have a several places in Indonesia. There is a, a place that really dry, and sometimes we 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 harvesting the rain to get water, and we want to grow a vegetable. Yes, we use uh, this uh, various type of hydroponics installations. And even we, we use the capillary system to watering the plants using a small pipe in the middle of a container that fulfill with the uh, uh, media, substrate media. They're going to uh, save the water off. So I think, I think that was an, one of the options for you if you are in the, in the dry area. Thank you very much, Mrs. Via and Mrs. Sanyu for the answer. Um, yeah, another follow-up question from Mr. Ganesh. He said, uh, you mean in terms of whole crop growing? Ah, okay. Well, he understood. Thank you very much. You mean in terms of whole crop growing? Can you can you verify, Mrs. Via or Mrs. Sunny, that you are that you were referring to whole crop growing? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So maybe um, we can move on to the next question from Bangladesh. Um, Dr. Fosse uh, is asking: Is aeroponic system applicable only for potato? Oh. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mokter Hussein, uh, I think uh, aeroponic system also can apply to leafy vegetable, not only for potato. Thank you, Is there can okay. So, uh, aeroponic system is one of the systems that we can apply uh, to various kinds of plants, but we need to remember that um, this system is need a structure oh, to yes. hold the uh, Root. roots, yeah. Yeah, so uh, even we use uh, for potatoes, this is not for the consumption potatoes. But for seed. Yes, only for the seed. So uh, potato that we plant in the aeroponics in our office is only to produce uh, the mini tuber or we call it genome generations, generation no. Um, that was for uh, the seed for the consumption potatoes. I think that was the the first stage, right? First stage, yeah. Okay. And we planned into another system of hydroponics to produce another mini tuber before we sell it to the farmer to grow the consumption size. But any kinds of plants you can apply to the container, uh, oh, sorry, for the aeroponic, but you need to remember uh, the strength of the structure that you built for your aeroponic system. If it's uh, simple like uh, what we have in our office, if we're not planting potato, we can planting lettuce or spinach or any kinds of leafy vegetables, but it will not be suitable 
to planting tomatoes, for example, is not suitable for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Sani and Mrs. Via. Um, for Dr. Hossein, do you have further responses regarding answers from uh, the team lecture? Okay, thank you. Easy, thank you. Okay, a uh, follow up question from Nepal. Uh, Mr. Ganshan said, as I know, drip irrigation system is one of the type of hydroponics. And hydroponics means soilless cultivation. But there seems soil like media are using in drip system. Could you please clarify me? Okay, thank you. Um, yes, drip irrigation is one of the type of hydroponics and it's for soilless cultivation. Yeah, there is a seems soil like media. Uh, in our office, uh, we use a uh, has, rice husk charcoal. It's kind of organic media, but it's not a soil. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to stay mute because I have another uh, microphone here. So um, there is a several, several kinds of hydroponic substrate media that we can use especially for the drip irrigations. Um, in our office, we, in here, we use the um, rice husk charcoal. And sometimes, okay. Okay. So this is uh, not, a, not a soil. This one is not a soil, even it's soil-like media. This is a rice husk charcoal, that's why the color is like a charcoal. And uh, this one is a hydrotope. Uh, it's, it's another kind of uh, hydroponics media. It's made from a clay and it's like a marble there. Um, the purpose of using this substrate media is to support the roots. So, uh, to grow a big uh, plant, we have to make sure that this plant can stand properly. So that's why we need to choose uh, several kinds of substrate to become an alternative media for the root environment. So we can choose uh, rice husk charcoal or maybe this uh, hydrotone or maybe uh, any kinds of the hard media that can support the plant. But for the nutrient, we still can supply from the nutrient solutions using the drip irrigation. This drip irrigation is also um, beneficial to save the water and also the fertilizer. So um, I think tomorrow we're going to talk about yeah. that also. Right? Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah, maybe tomorrow we can discuss more about what kind of substrate media that we can choose for the hydroponics. Okay. Uh, this one is soil. Yeah. <laughs> because drip irrigation is also, uh, we can use the drip irrigation for the soil as well. Okay, it's, it's not only for the hydroponics, yeah. but if you have um, maybe a surface area. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Less, uh, so it's yeah. Yeah, less water. You have a, an area, the dry area with the less water, and you want to save uh, your water, you can use these drip irrigations. And this drip irrigation is make sure that you supply the water only in the root part, not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So this is very good for you to save the water. I think uh, that's we can. Thank you very much, Mrs. Via, um, for uh, Mr. Gansham from Nepal. Do you have responses regarding answer from Mrs. Via Dini? Okay, he's responding so we can use very much marginal soil. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. okay, so 
Okay, I, I really understand that uh, there are many kinds of soil. Uh, even in Indonesia, there is a various type of soil. And uh, one of the purpose why we choose an hydroponic system is we need to uh, overcome the problem with the marginal soil. But, um, but of course, um, for this uh, kind of marginal soil, Sometimes we need to be more creative. For example, we adding more compost or maybe a lime, the agricultural lime to increase the pH and everything. But that was um, merely for the soil-based culture. Uh, in here, uh, in hydroponics, uh, we not do that. So we, we took the uh, short way, I think, <laughs> by using the hydroponics and replace all kinds of uh, soil using the other media, with, uh, uh, media that we use uh, better than the soil. And marginal soil, of course, we, we will not choose the marginal soil for the hydroponics because sometimes, uh, for example, this marginal soil has a uh, low pH. It means oh, yeah. that several nutrients will be not available for the plant. And we need um, a lot of effort to make this marginal soil to become a good place for plant to grow. It will be costly. It will take time. Uh, that's why we choose hydroponics rather than we uh, try to manipulate this marginal area, we can choose this kind of system. We build the installations and we will not contact directly into the soil. And we still can grow any kinds of plants. I think uh, that was our, our opinion. We're dealing with the marginal soil. Thank you very much, Mrs. Via. Um, for Nepal, do you have another response? Okay, may I remind the participants uh, that if you have verbal questions or feedbacks or suggestions for the lecturer team, hit the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen on your Zoom panel. And you might also choose to, to deliver questions in the chat section, and I will read your query loudly. Thank you. So we can play the videos. Uh, I think we can have these videos on, on the LMS, right? Yeah. You can download the video uh, on the LMS. So that was uh, one of the video how to make a weak system. So this is this container uh, in front of me is, is the one that's the one that uh, we make on the videos. So it's much easier to build the wig system rather than another installations. Okay, maybe is there any other feedback for uh, the video that we just played? Or maybe you can tell us about a hydroponic system at your place or your country. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we can share. Okay, um, uh, Kim, for the team lecture, uh, I think we already heard questions and feedbacks from numerous countries. Um, maybe we can invite participants from Fiji or Solomon Islands if they have response addressed to the team lecture. Okay, yes. Yeah. Particularly, maybe from Mr. Mushamal Kumar, if you have feedback, I saw you were turning on your video this morning. Okay, maybe, oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, for the team lecture, um, May I just put one question? <laughs> it was just pending, yeah, on pending before the video. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, you were, so for Mrs. Fia, you were mentioning about uh, different 
a possibility of different meat food for other crops, uh, particularly for melon. So my question is, what is the right composition of planting media and additional nutrient on the growth and yield of melon? <laughs> okay. um, actually, we're going to discuss that more uh, about that tomorrow. But okay, um, uh, for a uh, a kinds of melons because it's uh, is a really big plant mm -hmm. and they also have a heavy fruit. So we need to have a media that can support uh, this whole plant to stand properly. So they can grow well. So uh, for, uh, for melons, the composition, um, uh, we can use the rice husk charcoal, but uh, in, in a lot of amounts that we can make sure that we can, uh, we can really support the plants. And we can also make a combine between the rice husk charcoal with another media that uh, a little bit hard. It's like a hydrotone and everything. Uh, the one important thing is uh, the media that we use uh, it can support the root environment that make the roots uh, have a sufficient oxygen intake and also um, can keep the nutrient solutions that we provide to the plant. So, let's see. Okay, so let's share this. This is one of the examples. This is uh, uh, tomatoes, and these tomatoes in our office, it can grow to the to an extent about two meters high, with a lot of fruits. So we can uh, we can put uh, the media into about maybe forty. Yeah. Uh, um, Thirty-five into forty. Yeah. Thirty-five. More than forty. Yeah. Yeah, more than 40 centimeters in uh, diameters for the big one, the big, the big uh, plants. So things that we have to make sure that they can stand. And of course, we have uh, another construction for the greenhouse. Actually, we have a, a, a one typical greenhouse for, for this kind of plants, such a melon, and also um, tomatoes and everything. Maybe if, if, if you can see in our previous video for the opening, uh, there is a melon in our office. There is a, a smart greenhouse in there. And there is a melon plants that grow uh, in, the, in the pots and using the drip irrigations. So uh, the most important things we have need to consider how, the, how big the plant it will grow. So. <laughs> Uh, from that, we uh, can make uh, compositions to uh, to fill the pots for the plants. Yeah. Okay. okay um, I think that's um, uh, Miss Niken. Thank you very much for the comprehensive answer, Mrs. Via and Mrs. Sunny. Um, there is a, a new question from uh, from Cambodia. Uh, he said uh, he was asking, uh, "Do you have experience uh, installation of hydroponic system on small or large pond?" As most of farmer in Cambodia only has pond. Excuse me. Uh, uh, pond is like kolam in uh, our language. Kolam, kolam ikan. Yeah, it's a fish pond. Fish pond. Fish pond. Uh, Mister. Um. Mr. Saron, can you clarify? Yes, fish pond, he said. 
Yeah, I've been to Cambodia. It's a very interesting uh, place, and uh, I've been there to see some of the uh, cultivation techniques there. And yes, uh, some of the people they have a pond, fish pond, and uh, we can also do a hydroponic using a fish pond. That's that's a good that's a good thing. Uh, in here, we call it aquaponics. Aquaponics. Um, we use a uh, the water from the fish pond to watering the plants. Um, but sometimes uh, for the people here, even it's called aquaponic. Uh, sometimes they still use the soil <laughs> to support the roots. Um, for the pure uh, aquaponics that using uh, the water from the fish pond to watering the plants, in here, the plant will be act as a biofilter for the water uh, from the fish. So the plant will get uh, nitrogen, uh, such as nitrate and ammonium, from the fish pond to grow. But um, one of the things that we need to consider of using the pure hydroponics uh, combined with the fish pond or aquaponics is that um, the compositions of the solutions from the fish pond, it might be not really appropriate to the plants. So for the pure aquaponics using a fish pond and the pure hydroponics, I mean, the pure hydroponics here, it means uh, we use a substrate, but not a soil such as perlite maybe, um, all right, our charcoal that we will install, yeah, rock wool that we install, and the top of the fish pond is that uh, sometimes it's not grow really well. It's not, it's not grow really good the plants because maybe there will appear as the deficiency symptom because the uh, the water from the fish it mostly contains uh, nitrate, but it will be less to another another type of uh, nutrient that the plants need. That, that, that will uh, something need to be considered. That's why uh, for the combinations uh, using a fish one, uh, some of the people usually still use uh, soil to support the plant growth. That, that was a, a good combination actually, because we can harvest the vegetables and also the fish at the same time. Uh, I think uh, uh, that was uh, my opinions combined with hydroponic using a fish farm. Thank you very much, Mrs. Via, mm, for Cambodia. Mm, do you uh, do you have further response for the answer from Mrs. Via? Maybe just the uh, explanation uh, helps the uh, challenges challenges of farmers in your country. Yes, thank you. Okay, maybe we are, we moved on to the next question from uh, Dr. Hussein from Bangladesh. Uh, he is commenting about the video. He said, what will happen if the body of the box is transparent? Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, uh, I will try to answer why we need to have this kinds of book and it's not transparent. Okay, um, we need to make the appropriate environment for the root, of course, and the root will not grow properly in, if there is a light. So yes, we need to have uh, the box that which is not transparent. So. Even in aeroponics, we also use a plastic, a dark plastic, so we can make sure that uh, the root have an appropriate place for them to grow. Because some kind of, some of the hormone in the roots will not be active if there is a light in that. So yes, for a container, for the hydroponic container, especially uh, for the root part, it should be 
uh, dark, dark no, or not sorry, transparent. No, no, no. Or the pen will not grow properly. Thank you very much, Mrs. Fia and Mrs. Sunny. Uh, uh, Dr. Jen Hussein, do you have a uh, further response? Okay, maybe uh, we, we can move on to the next. Well, I think this is, a, uh, we can consider this as comment from the participants from PG. Um, Mr. Uh, Sham, Mr. Kumar said that uh, uh, your presentation is an awesome presentation with lots of skills, mm -hmm. but uh, he feels it is a bit expensive for farmers in Fiji to install this hydroponic system on their large scale farming land. I remember you mentioned about that uh, each method has uh, has different level of cost efficiency. Maybe you could emphasize on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, in, in our previous, uh, the opening videos, on the last part, uh, there, there was a, a hydroponic in a home yard. Uh, in a home yard, if I'm not mistaken, in, in, in the opening videos. So actually, hydroponics uh, nowadays in Indonesia is already also applied for the for the home yard, uh, and it's not need a high cost property. We can use the uh, use containers it's like a mineral bottles and everything. Of course, in the large scale, yeah, we. In a large scale, we need uh, a lot of properties. But for the household size, I mean, uh, in, in the yard, we can, we can have this uh, in a very cheap uh, materials. And we can plant lots of uh, vegetables, even we have a very limited area in our home yard. So, um, in, in another video, um, in, our, in our YouTube yeah. videos, I think in, in ICIT Lembang, there is a, a type of ferticulture, <laughs> which is only made from the PVC pipe. It's quite cheap. And it's uh, built like a tower. Like a tower? tower. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and for us, I know for about six. 60 meters square, they can have about 200, uh, 2,400 plants of lettuce uh, in, in, in a very small area. And they can sell the product. So uh, we can always choose uh, the kinds of material that we can afford not always choosing the expensive one, um, but we can also choose the cheap one or even we don't need to buy uh, these kinds of materials. I know that in Indonesia, uh, for example, for the media, in Indonesia, we plant a lot of rice. So rice plus charcoal here is quite cheap, but maybe, it won't be the same for you there uh, in your country. Maybe you have another uh, media for hydroponics that was might be cheaper than the rice house charcoal. So you can always be flexible and you can choose a kinds of media and also a kinds of uh, installations that you can afford. For this kind of installation, for example, for the wind installation, uh, you don't need electricity, actually. Again, here we apply an aerator here. It will be good because uh, it will supply more oxygen for the root plants. But if you don't have it, it will be okay. Even if we need a little, little effort to change uh, the soil nutrient regularly. So it's a very flexible technique for hydroponics.
I think um, it depends on you and your creativity to to build the hydroponics uh, system in your place. Thank you very much, Mrs. Fia. Uh, uh, it is the NAM Center's greatest hope that uh, technology that is introduced by the experts could be replicable in the participants' testing countries. Um, there is further feedback from uh, Mrs. Lucy from Fiji. Uh, I think this is also, uh, this is, uh, this aligns with the challenge that was addressed by Mr. Kumar, but she specifically mentioned about nutrition. She, say, she said that uh, the only problems is the source in Fiji, the only problems is the source of nutrients solution for plant intake, which is not always available. Uh, she is asking, is there a possibility that uh, they can outsource the hydroponic nutrients. Okay, uh, thank you. Actually, for hydroponic nutrients, we're going to discuss more tomorrow about the hydroponics nutrient. Yes, uh, but this is a very good question because uh, the most important thing that we need to consider in hydroponics is the nutrient yes. solution. We have to make sure that we provide the sufficient nutrient solutions for the plant. So, yes, uh, actually, there is a lot of alternatives uh, for uh, for the hydroponic uh, nutrient solutions. Even in some places, there is a debatable uh, debatable argument. Uh, it's it's a little bit debatable. For example, using an you know, organic uh, solutions rather than the chemical solutions. In here, we use the chemical solution because we want to make sure that the plants um, receive all of the nutrients that they need to grow. But it's always an option. It's always an option for them. Thank you very much for the answer, Mrs. Fia and Mrs. Sani. So yeah, for participants, I would like to remind you and encourage you to uh, stay following the whole sequence of the training tomorrow. If you want to listen to presentation uh, about the nutrient solution for hydroponic technology. So maybe we moved on uh, to the next question from Bangladesh. Oh, it's not a question, uh, it is a comment actually, uh, that if light come inside the container, then green algae will grow. Yes, uh, yes, I agree with that. That was also, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, <laughs> that was obviously. But um, what we need to emphasize and why we need non-transparent container is we need to make sure that the uh, roots have an appropriate environment to grow. And that was the side effect. If there is a light inside the container, there will be moss or algae. And uh, in some in some uh, installations such as uh, NFT or Diplo Techni, that this this thing has become an issue. Uh, there is an algae and also moss that clogging the system because uh, the an appropriate installations that allow the sunlight. Uh, reach the root, uh, the part for the root. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, team lecturer, and for Dr. Hossein for the um, engaged discussion. Okay, uh, maybe we move on to the next um, comment from. Uh, from, okay, from Nepal, um, from Mr. Ganesh said that uh, in in his opinion, roots prefer actualization environment. And another thing, if there is light inside the hydroponic system, there might be development of moss which interferes. 
or compete with the main crop for nutrient. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. It is the same comment from uh, Dr. Hosin. Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was oh. something that needs to be considered yeah. when when we is uh install the installation or the hydroponic system is uh the light in the root parts. Yeah, thank you very much. That's really important things to be remembered. Okay, we move on to new question from Cambodia. Mm -hmm. Can we install hydroponic system by using bamboo pipe? Bamboo pipe. Bamboo pipe. Well, bamboo pipe, yes. Yes, yes, yes of course. Um, some of our students, I still remember, they built uh, kinds of um, deep flow technique using a bamboo pipe. They make a hole in the huge bamboo and cut. Uh, one side of the bamboo to grow the plants. Yes, uh, it, it is possible, but we need to remember that the organic material such as bamboo is not long lasting materials and uh, we need to sterilize it also. So uh, for a possibility, yes, it is possible, but there is a lot of things that we need to consider. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, it's uh, quite long videos, but uh, this is a picture of how, how complicated to build a, an NFT installation for hydroponics. But um, for, for an information, uh, uh, the cost of this system is around 20 to $25 per meter for the installation. Uh, the cost is about 20 to 25 dollars per meter. And once again, this is not the most expensive one. There is still another uh, expensive installations based on the material that we use to build uh, the whole system. But this is only an option. We still can always choose the cheapest one and the most simplest one that we can afford. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ms. Nikan. Thank you very much, team lecturer, uh, for the video demonstration. Uh, before we are continuing to the discussion, I would like to remind uh, everyone that we have around 18 minutes left um, for the team lecture, do you perhaps have another video to play? I recommend we play it right now when we still have plenty of time left. Okay, okay I think um, the video is needs about uh, 20 to 25 minutes long, so if the uh, if there's any more discussion, I think I prefer we have uh, more discussions rather than the videos. I think the videos we can we can download to the LMS. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so well, I believe some participants from Cambodia turned on their camera. Maybe Mr. Penheim or Cambodia, do you have response or questions regarding the video played by the ICAT Lembang? Okay. Okay, um, well, I think no further questions. Or maybe for uh, participants from another country, Yeah, no, from Cambodia, no. Okay, well, um, so uh, for Mrs. Kia and Mrs. Sunny, um, considering the amount of time we have left, 
uh, and there are no further questions from participants, do you recommend us to conclude this presentation and discussion session or we play the video that haven't been played? I think, uh, oh, I think it uh, we better to conclude the sessions, but we also need to remind you to, to all of the participants that we also have, uh, I don't know, huh? oh. uh, we, ha we have um, maybe um, practice sessions for, for you, um, uh, self-practice, I think, if you have a time, uh, I mean, uh, we, uh, you can make a, a simple system of hydroponics using a wick system. So that was the, the most simple uh, installations of hydroponics that you can practice by yourself. And uh, maybe you can uh, take a photos and share to us. Um, tomorrow we can also have a practical sessions to make uh, the wick system also. So. Um, it is a very simple uh, technique that uh, all of participants can can practice the how to install the work system. Uh, bottle, mineral bottle, maybe? Yeah. Oh. Such as from the mineral bottles like this. You can put uh, kinds of wick. Oh, yeah week like this and uh, you can practice by yourself and uh, we hope that you can send us uh, the photos of your practical sessions. Okay, Mrs. Pia and Mrs. Sunny. Well, uh, maybe one last question from me before we conclude this presentation and discussion session. Uh, this question is actually more general, but it would provide the NAM Center better insight about how the hydroponic technology could help boosting agriculture in developing countries. So my question is, um, what is the impression of a younger generation in Indonesia in adopting the hydroponic system that you introduced for the past few um, hours? Uh, and can you share how it motivates the younger generation in Indonesia to become farmers? Okay, thank you. Um, Hydroponics now has become a trend, and during this uh, pandemic era, some of the young farmers start to uh, build their own business related with the hydroponics. Since um, most of the people now they work from home, um, uh, they start to build a simple hydroponics, and some of young farmers are already uh, take the challenge to start a business in a hydroponics. For example, uh, some of our students here, they start to make a small team or company that provide the hydroponic installations. So uh, installations for anybody who needs this, of course, with the affordable price. And another uh, young farmer will start to make a business in a hydroponic nutrients because um, the trends of hydroponics, it means uh, more, um, more demands for the uh, hydroponic nutrients. So they make their own formula and they sell uh, the hydroponics nutrients. So the business in hydroponics uh, is very interesting. Not only merely we build an installation and planting of vegetables, but it's widely open for the young farmers to enter uh, different sites of the hydroponics, such as to build up constructions of the installations, even the greenhouse, and also the hydroponic nutrient. And uh, it's, it's easy to see 
because most of them, they have uh, YouTube channels and they upload a lot of activities related with their uh, hydroponics uh, farm. And most of the people now, um, they find it that hydroponic is very interesting because it's very flexible that we can apply it in a very uh, limited space and an area using a very simple materials. And you, at least you can have your own fresh vegetables in your home, in your home yard that you can always harvest at any time that you want using the, the concepts and the principle of hydroponics. So nowadays it's, it's become um, very interesting and it's widely open, it's not only for only Philippi vegetable, but some of the young farmers also um, create the hydroponic for, um, for example, like a fruit uh, vegetables like tomatoes and also they use the hydroponic for strawberry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's a very good alternative. Uh, you need, you only need to be creative uh, uh, using the hydroponic to to get the uh, to get uh, more profit or build your own business. Thank you, Miss Nathan. Thank you very much, Mrs. Fia, for the important messages. Uh, finally, uh, for Mrs. Vyadini Putri and Mrs. Ani Hanifa, many thanks for today's fruitful discussion. I think as it is already evening in the Pacific, maybe the day one training could perhaps be concluded. So um, before, so for the participants, um, before you leave this Zoom meeting, uh, I would like to inform you and encourage you to join tomorrow at 10 a.m. Jakarta time zone with the same link, meeting ID and passport. Um, there will be interesting lecture on hydroponic nutrition, planting and maintenance as a continuance of today's presentation from the team lecture. Okay, well, maybe uh, uh, once again for Mrs. Viadini and Mrs. Sani, thank you very much. And of course, for Mr. Isaac Grace from the Embassy of the Republic of Fiji, thank you for uh, staying throughout the day one session. I am therefore announcing the recess of this training. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Isaac. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Terima kasih banyak ya. Thank Terima you. Terima kasih, Mr. Isaac. Terima kasih, Ibu Siti, Ibu Via, Ibu Sani. Thank you. Thank you.